Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. Uh, we're going to turn to two places today. We're going to look at John chapter 15 and uh, Romans chapter 10. John chapter 15 and Romans chapter 10. And um, we did this uh, earlier. Uh, we did this last week, and I want to do it again this week. Do we, do we have the slide ready for uh, this is my Bible? Do we have that? Okay, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to do this. We're going to just declare this out loud together. I really believe that this is something that the Lord is wanting for us to get settled into our hearts. And really, when we come to the Lord uh, and open the Word together, that, that we really do believe these things. And so if you have a Bible, if, you have, uh, if you're following along on the Bible app or uh, an iPad, whatever it is, can we just hold those up together? And let's just say this together out loud. Ready? Go. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. And so, Lord, we open our hearts, Lord, to receive all that you have. Lord, your word is alive. It is active and it is relevant to our life today, to our situation. And so, Lord, we want to hear you speak a word to us. We receive it today in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. 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 All right, so John chapter 15, and, I, and we've been in this study called Answered Prayer. And um, I have been getting more and more excited with every week about what the Lord is teaching us and what He's showing us. And I, I've, I've mentioned to a few people and at our early, uh, at our prayer time, uh, pre-service prayer with our volunteers and some of our staff, it, it's, this message is like one of those songs that just gets stuck in your head, but in a good way. You know, one of those good songs that you're walking around and you're like, I could jam out to this all day and it, and it puts you in a good mood. Have you guys ever had one of those songs? there's the opposite effect. There's those songs that you're like, can I please, how do I get this out, right? But those good songs, those songs that change your environment, it changed the way you're feeling. It, it, it literally changes your mood, the way you have a conversation. And, and I would say that this, this word today has been that for me this week, is that I'm thinking about it. I'm chewing on it, that, that there's really a specific word. And, and we alluded to it last week, and, and we're going to get into it here. But I want us to start in Rome, uh, John chapter 15, and we've been in, in, this, in this scripture for a while, but this is our, our key verse for this series. John chapter 15, verse 7. Let's, let's read this out loud together. Ready? Go. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. I, that's a big statement. This is Jesus saying this, and that's a big statement, isn't it? I mean, those are some bold words. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, how many of you guys know that's an important thing? That changes a little bit some of the things that you might be asking, the things that you're praying about, the things that you care about, right? When the word of God comes into your heart, this was our previous study, so I'm not going to get into it too much. When it comes in, it flushes all that other stuff out, right? All the things that keep the things flowing in your life that he wants to flow, that clog up our life, he takes that out when we get the word in. So that's what Jesus is saying. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, this sounds too good to be true, but we know it's true because number one, Jesus is saying this, but also because this is the word of God. And so when we see this, Jesus said, I only say what I hear the father say. I only do what I see the father do. And so when Jesus is saying this, we, we know that it is God's will for our lives to have prayers that are answered. And not just the occasional, once in the blue moon, you know, like the annual. No, 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 no. This is a way of life that when we pray, we see answered prayers. How many of you guys know if you can have your prayers answered, you've got it made, right? You've got it made. If we can pray and believe that God's going to answer our prayers... That's a big deal. And so we've been talking about that. And Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You know, when Jesus said this, there was a lot of people that taught the word of God. They would go into the synagogues. People would hear the words. But nobody said it the way Jesus said it. 
In fact, the Bible says that, that, that they would ask this authority that he teaches with. It's different than everybody else. How many of you guys know that it's one thing to hear the word, but it's a whole other thing in how you hear it, right? The way that you hear it matters. And, and that's what I want to talk about today, about hearing God. Everybody say hearing God. Hearing God. Hearing God. Last week we talked about, I want, to, I want to go back just a little bit. We talked about faith makes prayer work. That was the first key that we looked at into seeing our prayers answered. That faith is a key that makes our prayers work, that results in answered prayer. And we saw in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Everybody say faith. 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 It's key. We see it right away. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we see that we have to have something called faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Notice, for he who comes to God must believe. We must believe. We must believe. We must believe. To believe is a prerequisite to seeing our prayers come to pass. Really, those things that God wants to do already, he's saying, you got to believe. You got to believe. Number one, we must believe that he is, meaning he exists, that he is who he says he is, that he is good, that, that he's faithful. And we have to believe that he's a rewarder. Not only does he, does he want to, to be this God in some far off place, he wants to give you his very best. He's already done it. But he wants to see his best come to pass in your life. Amen. We briefly talked about how prayer does not make faith work. Faith makes your prayer work. I think sometimes many believers get caught up into the idea that the more we pray, the more likely it is that God will answer our prayer. If we say the same thing every time, a hundred times in a day, the more likely it is that God's going to answer our prayer. But the Bible is very specific. That's not how this, these things work. Faith is what makes our prayers work. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. All things. How many things? All All things. All things are possible, notice, to him who believes. I know sometimes we hear this verse and we think all things are possible to God. But that's not what Jesus was saying here. All things are possible to who? To the one that believes. To the one that believes. It's easy to think that all things are possible for God. But it's a whole nother thing to recognize, no, no, all things are possible for me, if I believe, if I believe. Jesus said in Matthew 21, 22, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Believing you will receive. Notice Jesus didn't say whatever you ask in prayer, you're going to get. No, no, no. He said whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Do you see the difference? Are we seeing that it's important for us to not just throw prayers up there, not just to, to say the same thing over and over, that, that when we pray, we need to what? Believe. Believe. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. It's the event before the event. There needs to be, when we come to God in prayer, there needs to be an event before the event. Before we see our prayer answered, there needs to be another event called belief. Believe that you've already received it, and then what? It will be done. Amen. And this is what I I was talking to Mickey as I was studying. I was like, I just want to talk about this. This is all I want to talk about this whole time, because I I think this is so huge. We saw in Romans 5, chapter 2, that we access the grace of God by faith. Now, we talked about what grace is. Grace is everything that you receive that you don't deserve. Okay? And so the Bible talks about grace, and it's usually in reference to the grace of God, and really it's everything that he's made available, that he's given you. It's a free gift. You didn't earn. You didn't deserve it. There was nothing you did, right? And, and so we see that we access the grace of God by faith. Romans chapter 5, 2 says, 
we have access by faith into this grace. You see, the way we access the grace of God is through faith. And so faith is so key. And we saw in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, notice, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So there is literally, literally, for those of you that say it that way, I heard somebody say that, and I was like, I, I want to say it like that now. There is literally no blessing that he has not already said yes and made available to you. It is done. It is finished. It has been paid for, and he has made it available in Christ Jesus. And the way that we access those gifts is through faith. Is through faith. So when the Bible says that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ, that's exactly what we're talking about. He's saying, listen, all the promises, they are floating around. They are ready. They are in, in the atmosphere. I've already, I want you to have them. I've paid for them. It is yours. And the way that we bring it from glory to reality is through faith. Are we seeing that? This is so huge. Because so often, believers, many people, unbelievers, every, people go through life thinking, I'm just waiting on God's timing. I'm just waiting on God's time. I've been praying for healing, but he'll do that when he wants to do that. And what we don't realize is he's already paid for it. Amen. It's already done. It's already been promised. It's already available. And so the question is, isn't when is God's timing? He's saying, no, 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 no. By his stripes, you were healed. It is available now. Today's the day. We don't have to wait for an event. He's, we're not waiting on God. He's saying, I've made those, these promises available. And the way that you access this grace is through your faith. We have to believe. We have to believe. And so our faith determines which parts of grace we receive. This is so key. Our faith determines which parts of grace we receive. I was literally getting turned up when I was going through this. I was like, I cannot sit. I can. Do we realize what we've been given here? Do we realize that there's people in our lives that have legitimate needs? Hurting people, people that are broken, people that are sick, people that are in despair. And sometimes as we just get so bogged down by what we feel or, or, or me, 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 that we don't realize he's already given me everything. And the way that we bring that reality into our lives and into the lives of others is through faith. You see, God does not determine when. He's already said yes. He's already said yes. Amen? Touch somebody around you and say, he's already said yes. He's already said it. You see, we determine, we determine through belief, by faith, we receive grace by faith. God will not make the decision on which parts of his grace you will receive because he's already made it all available. Amen? Amen? Faith makes prayer work. All right. I did that quick. Good. So now we're moving into something about another key to answered prayer. And that is hearing from God. Hearing from God. Everybody say that. Hearing from God. Okay. We're, we're going to look at this in a minute, but faith comes by hearing right? Hearing by the word of God. So if faith is a key to seeing our prayers answered, it's important for us to know how do we increase our faith, right? How do we believe? How do we come to a place where, where, where that event before the event happens? Before I see my answered prayer, I already have the faith to believe and it's done, right? How do we get to that point? If you want to have your prayers answered, how many of you guys know we have to be hearing from God? We have to hear from God. Amen. So we're going to talk about that today. <clears throat> if we 
I just think of the grace of God. Every spiritual blessing. If you want to access more grace by faith, we have to hear from God. And so we, saw, we see in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, I had you turn there. We're going to look at a few things in Romans chapter 10. But Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so for us to receive the faith or to have faith to receive grace, what do we have to do? We have to hear. You have to hear. You cannot have answered prayers if you don't hear about that grace. You see, when we hear, our faith rises, we believe, and we receive the gifts, the graces from God. Let me give you a simple example. Salvation. In order for you to be saved, someone in your life had to tell you the gospel of salvation. That Jesus died for our sins, he conquered death, he rose from the dead, he's alive, and now if we believe in him, we are saved, right? And so someone had to tell you that, but when they told you that, that, that about that grace, when you heard, if you believe it, then what happens? You receive it and you're saved. We see how that works? Very simple example. But how many of you guys know the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All his benefits. Let me put it this way. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. (laughs) Do we see the difference? Many believers stop at salvation thinking that is what grace is. Grace is salvation. It's a grace. But the Bible says that there are all these other benefits that he's made available to us. Amen? Amen. So we have to know what are the other graces that he's made available. Because if we hear about them, what happens? Faith rises, we believe in our hearts, and we receive those graces, those gifts from God. How many of you know he's got more grace for you? Amen? Amen? He's got more grace for you. Oh, it's there. It's there. No matter how long you've been in church, no matter how little you've been in church, no matter what your background, your circumstance, the ways of think, no matter what, he's saying, I've got more grace for you. My riches are endless. Amen. Amen. So we need to hear about all the graces. We need to hear from God, which increases our faith. And so if we just learn that faith makes prayer work, we need to learn how to increase our hearing, our faith, and that comes by hearing, hearing. So it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How many of you guys know that this scripture does not mean that the way you increase your faith is by sitting in church and just hearing the Bible read to you? How many of you guys know that's not going to do it? Just coming and hearing scriptures, just listening to an audio Bible is not going to actually give you faith. What this is saying is that faith comes when you hear the word of God, but when you hear it, you believe that you are literally hearing the word of God for you. That when you hear the word of God, you are saying, no, that is God's word for my life. Do you see the difference? It's one thing to show up in church and just be like, okay, here we go. Is it time yet, right? Like he's, he's going over or whatever, or I'm on my phone checking Facebook. No, that's one thing. But to actually see the word of God be effective in your life, you have to hear the word and not just hear it, but believe that's God speaking to me. Yeah. Amen? That's why we're starting our time. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. We have to capture that. Otherwise, the word of God would be of no effect for you. Amen? Amen. We have to hear correctly. Because if we're just hearing a holy book or someone's opinion, it won't work. We have to know that God is speaking to us. Amen. So it's not only what we hear that is important. It's how we hear it. 
You see, how you hear makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. When you know you're hearing from God, how many of you guys know you don't doubt it, right? If you're just hearing scriptures, if you're just hearing a motivational speaking, you're going to still have some doubt, right? That can only go so far. That's temporary. But if you know that you're hearing God speak to you, well, that changes everything. Because I know that I know. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what else I hear. I have already heard the Lord for myself. You see, hearing God makes all the difference. When you, he- when you know you're hearing God, you don't doubt. How many of you guys remember when God spoke to Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go, right? And, and this is what God said to Moses when he said to do that. He said, see, I have made you like a God to Pharaoh. Well, that changes things. Because I'm sure that there was proper protocol to go to Pharaoh. I'm sure that there was thing, people you had to go through. There was arrangements that had to be made. He had to be in the right mood, right? There was all these things. You, how many of you know you can't just walk up to the president of the United States and just have coffee, right? There's protocol. There's barriers. There's limitations. But God said, I want you to go. And when you go, I need you to know that when you go, I have made you like a god to Pharaoh. Well, how many of you know if you have made like a God, I don't need all the other protocols. All I need to do is just walk right in and be obedient to the Lord. But see, you don't just do that. You see, when you hear from God, you do things that not everybody else will do. There will be things that you do that is not ordinary, that is not natural, it's not readily available. But when God speaks, Well, now it's a whole different ballgame. Amen? You see, we have to hear. When you hear God, you dare the impossible. This is so key. This is so key. We have to know what God is saying to us. Because once you know, you can pray the right way. You can believe the right way. You can act the right way. Right? When you believe, you act differently. You talk differently, okay? If, imagine if, if, if God said to Moses, Moses, I want you to go talk to Pharaoh, let my people go. He probably would have been trying to figure out how to get to Pharaoh. But then he said, no, 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 you're like a God in Pharaoh's eyes. I've made you like a God in Pharaoh's eyes. Well, now I'm just going to walk right up there, <laughs> right? Amen? How many of you guys remember when Peter was on the boat and they were in the middle of the storm and they saw Jesus walking on the water and he said, Lord, if that's you, just give me the word right? Tell me to come out. What was Peter saying? He's saying, listen, I just, I got to know that this is you and that this is what you're saying. Amen? And so Jesus said one word, come. Come. So, and Peter obeyed that. He went out of what was the safe place, out of the boat where they were safe. There were storms around, but they could make it work. They could probably survive. And he's saying, if it's you speaking, I'm going to come out of that, and I'm going to come to you. Jesus said one word, and he said, come. And what happened? Jesus, Peter put his leg over the boat, got out, walked on the water. How many of you guys know one word from God can change everything? When you know God is speaking to you, one word from God will literally get you to do the impossible because you know because you know. Amen? Amen? This is so important. Hearing God is so important. We have to hear from God and believe. And once we hear from God, God, all doubt gets drained away. It gets drained away. And one of the primary ways we hear God is through His Word. It's through His Word. Many people say, I don't hear God speak to me. And I promise you, you have. Yeah. I promise you have but we have to know how to hear. Romans chapter 10, I want to start in verse 9. Romans 10 verse 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So notice you're believing in Jesus dying on the cross, uh, being raised from the dead, and by believing you're saved, okay? 
says, you will be saved. Notice verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Go to 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everybody say whoever. whoever. Let me tell you, the grace of God is available to everybody. It is available. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor. It doesn't matter your education. Whoever. Everybody say whoever. whoever. How many of you guys know everybody needs to know about this grace? Everybody. There is not one person. I was thinking about this this morning, and I was looking at all the people coming in and out of Starbucks, and I was like, God loves that person. He loves that person. He loves that person. And any one of them that calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Because there is a grace that's been made available called salvation, and it says, whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Let me tell you, a preacher is not just a person standing on a platform with a microphone. He's made grace available to you that we have a responsibility to give. The Bible says, freely you have received. Freely give. Amen. Amen. Verse 17, so then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so Paul is talking about the importance of hearing the word of God preached. This is so important. People need to hear this because how will they believe unless they hear? That's what Paul's saying. They can't believe if they don't hear. In the same way, we can't believe if we don't hear, right? We, we can't believe for salvation if we haven't heard the gospel of salvation. We can't believe for healing if we hadn't heard about the grace of healing, that he wants to heal you. We can't hear, of, we can't receive provision if we haven't heard about the gospel and the grace of provision that he wants to provide for you. Amen? Amen. You see, re receiving grace requires Saving grace requires saving faith. Saving grace requires saving faith. In other words, the way we receive faith for salvation is by hearing the word of God regarding salvation. We believe it and we receive the grace of salvation. Because remember, we access grace by faith. Amen? Amen. We access it by faith. Salvation, when was that made available? As soon as Jesus rose. It's been available all along. You don't have to wait till you're 84. You don't have to wait till you're 22. It's available the whole time. We access grace by faith. And so the way we get, got that saving faith is by hearing about saving grace from the word of God. Amen. So healing grace requires healing faith. Same thing, right? The way that we receive the grace of healing is by having faith for healing. Amen. You don't get healed just on saving faith. You need to believe for healing. So maybe you're here today and you say, I've received the grace of salvation. But maybe you're here and you've never heard about the grace of healing. Or maybe you've never heard about the grace of freedom, right? And deliverance from bondages, from addictions, right? There's all sorts of graces that have been made available. We don't want to just stop at salvation and receiving eternity from hell. That's a big deal. Okay? But it says, don't forget about all the other benefits. There's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of gifts that he's made available. Amen. I want to look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And I, and I love the pictures uh, that, that the Lord gives us through his word here. It says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing. Pause there. Jesus, everywhere that Jesus went, he would teach, he would preach, and he would heal. Now, the order is important. Notice it doesn't say he would heal and then he would teach and preach. No, no, no. He would teach what? The gospel of healing, the grace of healing. And when they would hear it, 
they would believe it, and what would happen? They would be healed. So Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing, and healing. So Jesus was preaching more than just salvation, wasn't he? Oh, he went and brought, he, he brought it on that one. I mean, he brought the house down, literally. Like, he brought it down. He would go and he would teach about salvation, but he didn't stop there because clearly people are being healed. So we know that when Jesus was teaching and preaching, he was also giving, making the grace available of healing. God wants to heal you. And he has the power to do so. And everybody that would believe that, that would allow that word to come in and would believe it, they would access that grace by faith, by believing. And so it says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing. What was he doing? He was preaching the benefits of God. And there's a lot of them. He was preaching the benefits. And because he preached it, people believed it, and they were healed. And so it says, he was healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. Notice verse 24. Then his fame went throughout, went throughout all Syria. Let me ask you, what fame went throughout all Syria? The fame that he's healing people. <laughs> it was going around like wildfire. Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing, and guess what? The word got out. And all of a sudden, people started hearing and believing, well, if that guy could get healed, maybe I can get healed too. You see, his fame was going throughout. What was going out? The grace of God was going out is what was going out. All the benefits that he was preaching were going out. And so it says that his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people. Why would they bring him sick people? Because they knew <laughs> this guy heals. This guy, this guy heals. He'll heal you. He healed me. He healed that guy. If you know he healed that guy, you know he's going to heal you too, right? The word got out. You see, they had heard something that compromised them to the ordinary. They had heard something that brought the impossible into the possible. They had heard something called the grace of God. And when they believed it, they accessed that grace and their lives were changed forever. You see, we have to get this. We have to get this. We access grace by faith. So they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Amen? Amen? You see, but before he healed them, they had to hear. They had to hear. They had to hear that he will heal them, that he wants to heal them. You see, they heard, they believed, and their prayers were answered. How many of you guys are seeing this today? Are we seeing this? Are we capturing this today? This is so important. And so here are these people accurately hearing the word of God that God wants to heal, that Jesus is our healer, they believed, and now their prayers are answered. This is why this is so important to see our prayers being answered. It's, we can't just be throwing them up there. We, we've got to understand what grace has God made available to me here? What promises has he made available to me? And when I hear that, something's stirring on the inside. And all of a sudden, I find myself believing something that isn't even possible. But because I'm believing in the right things, and because I'm believing the right way, I can expect my prayers to come to pass. I, I, I think it's interesting that many of these people that they brought to Jesus, all the sick, they were sick, I'm sure many of them, for many years, right? Right? They had grown up with conditions. They had had these things maybe mostly for all their lives, some for decades, some for years. And I wanted to notice that they weren't waiting for God's timing on this. You see, what they needed 
was to hear. Because when they heard, healing came. Did, did we capture that? Sometimes we think, well, God will do it if he wants to do it. Or we'll think, well, if God wanted me to be well, he would have made me that way. Or I would have been born that way. But healing is his will every time. He's a God of life, not of death. It's his will. Jesus, notice Jesus doesn't, he didn't, you don't ever read about any time in the Bible where Jesus says he's healing people and he's, he's preaching and he's telling the good news and he's talking about healing and he doesn't, you never see him pray for somebody and say, oh, yours is for another time. Sorry. Not once. Amen? It's not about the timing. It's about do you believe? Do you have the faith? And it comes when we hear the word of God. Hearing makes all the difference. Say that with me. Hearing makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. You see, they had to hear about healing. They didn't have to hear nice teaching. They didn't have to hear the safe thing. They didn't have to hear the motivation speaking. They had to hear the word of God. Amen? Amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 says, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. How many years? 12. 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Have you ever been there? Where it seems like no matter what you try, no matter how much effort you put into it, it only seems to get worse, right? And so here's this lady. She had spent everything she had on this affliction, on this sickness. She had sought out the medical people, the, the people that, that were supposed to be able to do something. And notice, she was in a worse place than ever before. Anybody been there? Mm -hmm. And so she had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, when she heard when she heard about Jesus, what do you think she heard about Jesus? That Jesus heals. When she heard, we all need a moment where we hear the Lord. Where wherever you're at in life, you know that you know, that's for me. That's for me. One word from God changes everything. Changes everything. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if, I, if only I may touch his clothes, I, I will be made well. And so here she is having, hearing that Jesus heals. She believes that if I can just get to him, I know he'll heal me too. And when she does it, she's healed. She's healed. See, the event before the event happened in this woman's heart, didn't it? She knew. He heals. I know that if I can get to him, he'll heal me too. That's what we're talking about. The event before the event. Amen? Amen. The event before the event. Verse 29, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. How did it all start? With hearing. When she heard about Jesus. Nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. She had heard something. You see, it had taken 12 years for her to be in this condition. For someone to tell her, there's a guy named Jesus and he'll heal you. But really, that healing was his will all along, wasn't it? It was all along. But she needed someone to tell her this reality, this truth, this grace. Amen? Amen. See, God wanted to heal her 12 years earlier. But today, she heard. She heard. Acts chapter 14, verse 7 says, and they were preaching the gospel there. It's talking about Paul and Barnabas. 
It says they were preaching the gospel there, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked, right? So here's this guy born with this condition. He's never walked. He has no strength to walk. He has no coordination to walk, right? He's not even, it's, it, I'm sure it's not even in this guy's frame of reference. And so it says he was sitting there, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. And this man heard Paul speaking. What do you think he was hearing Paul speak? He heard the gospel of healing. Amen? He was hearing that he has something called healing available to him. So this man heard Paul speaking, and Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. How did he have faith to be, how did he see that he had faith to be healed? He could see it, that this guy, he's getting it. He's believing it. He's, he's capturing it. The event before the event, it's happening in his heart, right? He could see it. It was evidence. Why? Because I'm sure there was some excitement in this guy, right? You mean I've been crippled my whole life, but I don't have to be? Can we get a little excited about that? Yeah. That this is what God is doing? That this is a grace that he's made available? And so here's Paul preaching on healing and salvation and probably other graces, and he's saying, listen, this is available to you. And he sees this guy. He's like, oh, I see that you have faith. I see that you have faith. And notice what Paul says. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And the man leaped and walked because he heard, because he believed. The event before the event was allowed to happen in his heart. Why? because somebody was declaring the, all the benefits of God. Amen? Amen? That not only does God want to save you, but he wants to heal you. And that man believed it, and he leapt and walked. Everyone say, hearing from God. Hearing, hearing from God. Jesus says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The first thing that Jesus says that he was anointed to do was to preach the gospel to the poor. That's interesting, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see, Jesus came to preach about many things, and one of those things was about the gospel of provision. The people, the Jewish people at this time, they were under Roman rule, and they were heavily taxed. And there was many people that could barely scrape by. There was people that were suffering. And Jesus wanted them to know, I have come with some good news for you. Amen? Amen. You see, financial grace re requires financial faith. You see, if you don't hear what God says about providing for you, then you won't have the faith that God will provide for you. Amen? Are we seeing the pattern here? You see, we have to hear what God says about us, the benefits that, that he's made available. And when we hear about them, we access those graces by faith. We are not here to wait on God's timing anymore. Amen. He's already said yes. Yes, he said yes. We need to hear the word of the Lord that provokes our faith and reach up and grab it. When you hear it, do you believe it? When you come to church and hear the word of God, do you come ready to receive? Amen? Amen. Or do we just think, well, God will do what he wants to do? See, we already know what God wants to do, don't we? Yeah. He's already told us in his word. We know what he wants to do. You see, he's made grace available, but we access that grace by faith. How many of you guys know when you're expecting something, you, you're, you're a little different, you're in a different position than you normally would be, right? Like if, if someone's saying something that you really want to hear, but you're having a hard time hearing, you don't just sit there and kind of like, whatever. No, no, no. If you want to hear it, what do you do? You lean in, right? You get on the edge of your seat, you press in, right? You might even do one of these, like get those deer ears going, you know, those things that are going to catch everything and you, you do what it takes. You, you might move your position, 
right? If, if you're in the back of the room and you can't see, all of a sudden you're like, I need to get somewhere where I can see, right? Zacchaeus, the wee little man, what did he do? He got in position. He had, he had something. He's like, this man has stuff for me. I got to get in position to receive it, right? And so we, we, we do, when we receive the word, do we believe it? And do we believe that the word that he has for us will change our lives? That it's more than enough? That it's grace for our situation today? How many of you guys know God speaks to us today, right? That he's alive and that he's active. You see, because when you believe, you act on it. You act on it. How many of you guys remember Isaac, Abraham's son? In Genesis 26, verse 1, it says, There was a famine in the land. Verse 2, Then the Lord appeared to him, to Isaac, and said, Do not go down to Egypt. In other words, God was saying to him, Listen, I know everybody else is running for the fields. I know that there's famine where you're at, and everybody else is going to Egypt where their things are looking good. Okay? But I want you to stay right here. Okay? So he says, Do not go down to Egypt. Verse 3, dwell in this land. What? Well, that, that's contrary, God. I mean, God, that doesn't make sense. I know you've promised me to be flourishing. You've promised me to, to, have, to, leave, to, to grow and to flourish and to be successful. And, and I can't do that here, God. Don't you understand? But notice, God didn't say, go do what everybody else is doing. He says, I want you to stay right here. And so verse 3, he says, dwell in this land. And notice God says, I will be with you and I will bless you. Let's see what what happened. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. Where did he sow? That famine land. He He sowed in the land that nobody else sowed in. He sowed into the impossible. I mean, I'm sure most people are looking at him like, you are literally just, you are literally just throwing away all this seed, right? You are being a waste. You are throwing away all your inheritance. You are acting like a fool, okay? But what did, God, what did Isaac hear? You see, he had heard something different. He, no, no, but, but God said, dwell in this land and I will bless you. You see this? And so it says, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. In what year? The same year. And the Lord blessed him. The man became, began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Why was he prosperous? Because he had heard the Lord. He had heard something that changed everything. You see, the event before the event. In John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What was Jesus, what, let me ask you, what benefit is Jesus talking about right here? Deliverance, bondage, all that baggage that we tend to rack up and hold on to, all that emotional stuff. Jesus is saying, listen, You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Isn't Jesus talking about a benefit? Yes, he is. He's saying, you don't have to go through life carrying around all that stuff. I've already paid for all that. And for those that believed, they walk in freedom. Are we seeing this? You see, we access those graces by faith. By faith. But you have to hear, don't you? We have to hear about these things. What you hear is important. How you hear is more important. The what does matter. If we're just talking about being positive here, we're all wasting our time, right? We're just treading water. But if we're hearing the word of the Lord, then we need to address how we're hearing sometimes. Taking care of the garbage. Taking care of the junk. Coming ready. Come expecting. Jesus says in Matthew 13, 13, he says, seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear. You see, some people hear the word of God, but they're not hearing God speak. 
you know, I'm having a great hair day. This thing is just it's like driving me crazy. I apologize. I keep doing this. It's not like it's just driving me nuts. All right. It's working up a sweat. That's what's happened. It's that humidity factor. You see, some people hear the word of God, but they don't actually hear God speak, to, speak through that. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He says, seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear. You see, I, I, I believe that some of you here today are hearing differently than you've heard before. Because we're talking about these graces and how we have access to these graces. And that if we, we come to the Lord expecting, if we come to the Lord believing that, no, this isn't just a Bible story. This isn't just words in a holy book. This is God's word to me. When we come like that, how many of you guys know I'm seeing for the first time? Right? I'm seeing things different. When we're talking about these scriptures, this isn't just for some people. No, this is for me. This is God's word to me. And then there's others that they may nod their head. They may even say things like, wow, that's a good sermon, right? You really had us on the edge of our seats. But they didn't actually hear the Lord. Because how you hear matters. How you hear matters. You see, they heard the Bible, but they didn't hear God, and it makes all the difference. I was thinking about this, and I was reminded of the story of the old man and the, the, old, the old husband and the old wife, and they were sitting on a bench together, and they were just looking and taking in the scenery, and the old man looks at his wife, and he says, you know what? I love you. And the old woman goes, what? And the old man looks at her and goes, I love you. And she goes, huh? And the old man looks at her and goes, I love you. And the old woman looks at her and says, well, I'm tired of you too, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes just because we're hearing the right things doesn't mean we're actually hearing what's actually being said. You see, we have this growing condition in our culture today called spiritual deafness, where we have become insensitive to what God is actually saying. And we think that we can approach God just any old way that we want, and that he's going to say what, and we're going to receive what he actually wants to say. How many of you guys know the, the way we approach God matters? Yeah. The way we come in and give our praise matters. Mm -hmm. Right? If we're just sitting, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, that's going to have an effect on what you hear. Yeah. It's not enough just to be in the room. It's not enough just to hear the words. How you hear matters. The way we approach God on these things matters. We can't hear from God and what ends up happening is we, we get stuck in our boats in the middle of our storms. And God is saying, I'm trying to break through the darkness. And I'm trying to break through into the confusion. And I'm saying, listen to me. I'm trying to talk to you. He's trying to break through today. Amen. Are we listening? Are we hearing? And do we believe? Amen. All this grace belongs to you. He gave his most precious thing his son, because he's saying, I want to make all this grace available to you. I want the very best for your life. I want, I have everything that you need, everything that you could ever want. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Press in, lean in, believe it, and take it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together.